meets the thoughts of life this is wrath and grace and uh yeah we have some special guests here tonight and a dope topic and uh, i'm excited I'm this excited. is grown folk talk yeah man uh, <laughs> only <laughs> only for the singles <laughs> <laughs> All right this episode is called singled out another episode of the basement and we're glad to bring it to y'all another wednesday right here on the wrath and grace page we have two special guests with us and a couple special guests in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Soon enough, we're going to have a camera back there to show uh, an audience that we have here live. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So those of you that are watching right now, go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and comment with us in the comment section. We love to hear from y'all. We hate to just come to the table with topic, topics and discussions and never hear from y'all. We love to hear your opinions, your thoughts, your concerns, your questions. So go ahead interact with us interact with 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 each other in the comment section just interact <laughs> um at this time we will have a nice little intro we have my brother luke what's up how you doing and my sister bryce hey yeah, um yeah. who are you guys uh. <laughs> who are you in christ <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I'm single, so I'm, I'm right. complete. Okay, <laughs> you're single, so you're complete. No, no. Okay, <laughs> I like that. I like that. Which, uh, which, uh, which, which preacher did you hear that from? <laughs> He's thinking. <laughs> Why are you thinking? Why Was that you... a Paul Washer quote? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you share a little bit about yourself, Luke? Um, you know, let people know who you are. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm connected here because Los was my pastor for five years or so something like okay. that um, mm -hmm. I was connected to the church before that at the gathering um, currently I'm one of the pastors at the gathering um, was a co-pastor with Los for about three weeks <laughs> um, the main right. things that we did in ministry together was pray over each other yeah. when I got appointed and when you when you launched the plant yeah. so um, I work right now I work at uh, Martin Appliance to deliver and install appliances um, so that's kind of how I support myself and then serve in the church and 
people ask me what I do in my free time, that takes up most of my time. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. Nice. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, and we have Bryce in the house. Mm-hmm. What's the deal? In the basement. In the yeah, basement. in the basement. Yep, <laughs> underground. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, I got connected through going to uh, Christ Alone, starting I think this May. Um, but I'm currently a senior at Millersville. Um, I am 27. I did take off time from school after I graduated high school. Just going through life and different things and um but yeah i found my way back there so i go to school i also work part-time and that between those two things takes up a lot so right cool cool all right it's good to have y'all here yeah yeah all right so let's let's get into this uh let me give an intro for those of you that are wondering what this episode is actually about oh whoever's in the background yeah <laughs> We got some extra headphones around here somewhere. Where we at? I don't know. I can hear some. Is it your phone? Mm-mm. Oh, it's probably Luke's. <laughs> All right. Cool. We're yeah, good. We're, we're good, good. We're good. All right. I'm going to read scripture today as the intro. I still hear it, though. Yeah. Whoever's phone yeah, just. You sure it isn't Luke's? There we go. All right. <laughs> I knew I heard it close to me. All right. <laughs> All right. Let me give you an intro to this episode that is called Singled Out. I'm going to be reading from Matthew 19. And the Pharisees came up to Jesus and tested him by asking, is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? He said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. The disciples said to him, if such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. But Jesus said to them, not everyone who can receive this saying, not everyone can receive this saying, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been who have been so from birth and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the safe for the sake of the kingdom of heaven let the one who is able to receive this receive it so i I wanted to bring that up because of the fact that the disciples brought up a good question they said well is it better just not to be married then because of all the situations that happen once you get married um it's such a hard thing to be married and to stay married and especially here in 2019 in america where the divorce rates are so high even for christians Mm -hmm. so we're going to be dealing with singleness today we're going to be dealing with the gift and what some might call the curse of singleness (laughs) (laughs) i say some what some may call it um i don't think it's so so let's deal with it let's deal with singles in the church and uh and how to deal with singleness in general all right so before we can do that i wanted to define some terms here i wanted to clarify to the audience who we'll be talking to what we'll be discussing uh and bringing more clarity to the topic at hand i want i did want to bring up that there's several types of singles out here and i think there's singles now that may have not existed so much in the bible days And what I mean by that is like one single that we have today is like the single baby mom, the single baby dad. Um, There were widows and there's still widows today, (laughs) but it's not the same as back then. I I wouldn't say so. Um, Is anybody in agreement with that one right there where we have more kids out of wedlock than I I would say any other (laughs) generation before us? And at least compared to Jesus's initial audience. That was Jewish culture. The law of God had an influence in the culture. All right, for sure. 
I, th- I think even you just have periods of singleness for longer on average. You know, if you think about what Bible scholars say the average age was once a person got married, it's still like that, right? In, in other parts of the, the world, whereas I think the median age last I heard for um, young Americans getting married was around 28. Yeah. So even if you're on that trajectory, even if that's a goal of yours, you're still looking at a lot of time a mu- it's a much longer period in your life than yeah. i think historically and it, it wasn't uncommon back then to even for females to be married at like a, a age as young as 13 years old right. back then which is way different than here in america um so we're dealing with a different situation in one way but there's a whole bunch of other ways that we can relate to what's going on in the scriptures yeah. and, and the background of what was happening back then. So we're not just dealing with single men and single women in general. We're dealing with specific examples of that, which would be single moms, single dads, um, singles with no kids. We're dealing with widows. Um, we're dealing with all types of singles, really. Um, so I did want to bring that up today. Um, yeah. We're even dealing. I, I was even thinking about like singles that are struggling with homosexuality which yeah. deserves its own yeah. topic within itself yeah um yeah. so yeah we're dealing with a bunch of singles but today i think we'll target more on just singles in the church yeah all right so i do i did want to clarify that a little bit um los i got a question right. <laughs> i didn't even prep you for this um are you able to go to first corinthians chapter seven and kind of like break down what might be brought up as the gift of singleness right there in the scripture yeah sure actually yeah so first corinthians 7 32 to 35 right it says i want you to be be free from anxieties the unmarried man is anxious about the things of the lord how to please the lord but the married man is anxious about worldly things how to please his wife and his interests are divided And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things and how to please her husband. I say this for you, for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. Mm. So there's a reality, you know, and I think Paul understood the reality of marriage being something that consumed your time and your priorities, uh, and it should. Um, And and there's that reality that it limits someone, uh, you know, versus someone who's single to be able to do ministry. Um, He uses the term worldly, and it doesn't mean what a lot of people out there think. Mm -hmm. It just means that the things that uh, accompany marriage uh, are prioritized over, you know what I'm saying, Uh, the things that God has called us to do out there. You know, uh, first and foremost, he's called us to be husbands, to be, you know, for the women to be wives, uh, to concern ourselves with our homes. And even a pastor uh, pastoring a church, he's to be preoccupied with his home, not the church. OK, right? so being preoccupied with his home is the best way to pastor his church. Um, if he can't, uh, you know, uh, take care of your home, you can't take care of God's house. You right. know, and so there is that priority. But being single, there's that freedom. Mm. You know, I think that Paul's just emphasizing that his concern for the church of Corinth was, you know, don't restrain yourself. Yeah. Be free because there's a lot of work to do. Um, and marriage does come with a lot of work. <laughs> Amen. <Right? laughs> Amen. We, we, I think we did an episode on that. And so we talked we did, about we that reality. We did a reality. couple episodes about that. <laughs> it's good. Marriage is a good thing. You know, but it's it's a busy thing. It's it it takes up a lot of time. And so this is an issue of really uh, lending, uh, having the time to be able to do what God's called you to do without certain restraints put on you. Yeah. And so I think it's fair for for Paul to ask that of of believers to say, hey, you know, there's there's a ton of work to do in the the world. Mm -hmm. Free yourself Mm -hmm. uh, and just go. And, you know, but then he also says, if you can't get married, you know, right. Uh, right. So, right. Amen. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I did want to kind of like preface things with that right there. First Corinthians yeah. seven and just dealing with uh, some other things. But I, I, I did want to get into some yeah. of this content. We have two singles with us today. So we're going to be hearing from them. <laughs> One is a single <laughs> pastor. All right. College student, correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Single college student. So. 
yeah we, we we're touching demos today uh <laughs> we're definitely getting in there so the first question i have for the audience and you guys can feel free to answer this one do you think the church has done a good job lately with handling singles in the church it's mm, a good question that was for the audience that wasn't for us <laughs> <laughs> yeah give us question. your thoughts on that think? guys i just posted the question oh yeah, you did you did too did. all right all right so go ahead yeah um luke what do you think sometimes 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 well, and in what ways has the church done a good job and maybe what ways do you think they it hasn't I think times the church has done a good job have been in teaching people what to value in a spouse. Okay. Um, I think people have discipled well when they've taught people to to see marriage in its place. Gotcha. Um, it's not it's not the destination. Okay. Um, but sometimes it can when you're single it can feel like marriage is the destination and like things are a preparation for that. Mm. Gotcha. Um, marriage yeah. is a part of the journey. It's a it's a gift from God too, um, yeah. and it's something that is a part of we steward it to serve Him. Um, I think. I think with good intentions, Christians can err and have erred, um, when the way of expressing love is too much towards getting people married. <laughs> Um, yeah, so like like the, uh, get them to the Greek that get them to the marriage and all that. Yeah, I definitely definitely know what you mean right there. <laughs> that happens. I, and you know what? It's funny because and obviously the people that have been single longer know that happens. Right. And, and, and that's funny because yeah. we yeah, like we've been single. I, I was yeah. telling Los yesterday I was before I got married, I was single for five years as a Christian. Yeah. So like I know about being single and um, I, I, in every single way um, I've had more failures than um successes as a single so um yeah i know exactly what you mean um in our own minds of feeling like we need to be rushed to that altar and uh even in our own minds and in other people i think uh yeah. putting pressure on us yeah, yeah. um yeah how, how, how would you say maybe that the the church has done a good job or maybe not such a good job with the singles um yeah i i don't think it's done a good job and i and i say that with the understanding that I think there are a lot of things the church does very well. Mm. I think part of it is that as a demographic, singles are typically a lot um, smaller okay. portion. Um, and I think there the things, my problem with the things that are done well, like for example, the, the values they instill about marriage, about being single and what that should look like, um, to your point, is just that it's almost taught like during this specific period of time it's not talked about as if your your time of being single is going to last your life the the underlying assumption that i felt like i was taught was while you're single right it was never right let's look at this as a way to live your life it was like so in this time that you're in right now that you won't always be in <laughs> yeah. um this like, is what you should do like there's things in this time that you're going through right. that you won't deal with right. ever again right right, right. and like yeah. I, I i think the encouragement is often when you're struggling that um it's, god, it, god will provide us god will provide <laughs> god will provide and i and i think it's also the 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 phrasing that's used it's like when you get married uh, when this happens yeah. when and I, I i think for most people that assumption is correct i you know but and also as well as finding community in the church i think it's set up more for families again i think that has to do with the demographics the percentage of who's in there for sure but as a single person i think for me personally one of the things i struggle with is is loneliness mm. and sometimes a church sadly can be one of the most lonely places as a single person going in there being surrounded by families being surrounded by people who have someone to share their life with living moment by moment day to day um how i i, I think the church could do better facilitating that community instead of making it sometimes more of an isolating space yeah, yeah. it's funny that you mentioned that because we're kind of working on something like that in our church right right and, and yeah. i thought I, you brought that idea up correct yeah, I mean, my sister as well, who's here, and one of our friends, Chris, who <laughs> just spilled on herself. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, we talked about that because I think there is a, um, 
there there is a need kind of to to be able to relate and communicate with people who are in the same place you're in mm. and sometimes all it takes is a couple of pe- people saying like do you want to get together do you want to do something like let's live life together um and so that's what we're trying to do trying to get a group together we meet to study the bible and and pray for each other and just try to fellowship and and share this journey share this burden together right because that's one of the hard parts of singleness you often feel like right. you're going through something and you don't have you don't have that person with you to like share that load with you right and and you mentioned even connecting the young singles with like married couples as well yeah so i had heard um favorite tim keller um he's a pca pastor but he he gave an interesting sermon once where he kind of talked about the fact that god has given unique gifts um to each stage of of human life and he was talking about how each stage comes with gifts but also comes with struggles so for example a single person uh oftentimes doesn't doesn't have maybe that community but they do have a lot of free time they have more free time whereas a family they have a lot of community happening but they probably don't have a lot of free time so he was talking about in the church seeing if you can help each other use your strengths to help someone in their weakness so for example the example he gave is you know if there's a young family with lots of kids then over here you have a single person who's lonely maybe wants to have a family doesn't why don't you watch the kids someday why don't you say hey could i could i do could i do this could i do that what would what would be helpful for you can i live life alongside you in a way that maybe those young parents really need a break maybe they just know they need a couple hours and in a way that would like dignify you and make you not feel like such a third will Uh, yeah come around a married family right right (laughs) and also you got to think then it's not only you're getting you're getting community you're then blessing those kids because then you're someone that they have to, to to be a person in their life um that's not just their parents that they can then you're building that relationship so that to me was encouraging because i think there's often ways it's easy to say well this should be done or this isn't done well but maybe let's put a more positive spin on it like Mm. let's go on the offensive like okay so what can we do right to solve these issues amen i wanted to ask luca from a pastoral perspective uh, how do you see as a pastor like and overseeing a church and for a, having few, singles, for a few months right so. well i mean yeah, 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 yeah. you've always been know. pastoral right. you know so that that's that's why yeah. you're you're doing what you're doing but as a pastor yeah. what what's your perspective on pastoring and, and dealing with that reality of single right i have church? so i have a i have a perspective on um our ministry to the church is not primarily ministry to different demographics right so it's not I'm not, first of all, a single Christian. I'm first of all a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so the ministry of the word, the ministry of sacraments, the ministry of fellowship is ministry to me. Um, And that's primary. I think that things like um, like a youth ministry, like a men's group, like a singles ministry can be good supplemental. Um, So so first of all, I just I guess I just see like here's the here's the core pieces of ministry, God's means of grace um, to edify his church. Mm-hmm. Now, I think within that, we're talking about how do we apply the principle of fellowship to people that are in a different life stage? Um, we have a different life rhythm. We have, you know, yeah, right. we have different yeah. associations and stuff. Um, I mean, I'm in a small church, so like single people are like in my home no <laughs> um you have so a whole I, squad at i the live house. with i live with some single people um it's something that like currently is not um an emphasis in my church but the the singles in the church are not are not without opportunity um to be deeply a part of uh fellowship groups or to be mentored right. or so on right so i even i even look at like when i was when I was a believer in church in my early 20s, I didn't only want like young adult ministry. Like I went to the elders and said, I want to be mentored. Mm. And so I would encourage singles. Um, I'm for doing some things specifically for singles, but I would encourage singles to fully commit to the rest of the life of the church. It's mm. good. That's really yeah. good, man. Yeah. That's, That's why I asked you the question because <laughs> we're on the same page. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> or at least in the same book. <laughs> same that's table. Right. No. no, that's good. Same book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to get into to a couple of the comments. Let me see. Um, Chris says, I think Christ alone has of recent. Done a good job? Okay. All right. Because <laughs> <All right. laughs> it was like a throw up in there. Like, has done a good job? Maybe hasn't done a good job? Christ alone is obviously the church that we go to and he pastors. If you want to throw that little plug in there, yeah, sure. you guys can check us out. At ChristAloneFellowship.com. I'm, I'm, one it. day I'm going to like <laughs> step up the advertisement game to the whole next level, I promise. Um, Jesse says, Bryce on fire. Look at that. Um, we should have had like the suit that uh, the girl in the Hunger Games had. When oh, Katniss. Yeah, Katniss. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't good. <laughs> Chris uh, says, or almost like what you're doing now is preparing you for marriage rather than developing you as a person. Right. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, Thanks, he, Abner. Appreciate that. What did Ab say? It's a good answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Lou says, also, I don't think the church has to handle the singles any more than they should. Hold case. on, hold on. Can I interrupt? Can I say hi to my mom? My mom's Is watching. Is she on? Oh, what's up, <laughs> mom? What's up, mom? How you doing? <laughs> Luke's mom. <laughs> Luke, I yeah. am your mother. <laughs> That's an appropriate cutoff. Like, there we go. You can't always do that. I'm sorry. Out. Yeah, you got to give a shout out to mom, man. That's what's up. That's, That's what's, what's up, up man. So, um, so, yeah, you were saying. Oh, Luke. <laughs> Luke, he says, I don't think the church has to handle the singles any more than they should cater to their marriages and parents first i'd personally be okay with that so i i get it priority wise um but you know what being a former single <laughs> an ex single being an ex single <laughs> right <laughs> not a single ex <laughs> <laughs> being an ex single um i definitely remember feeling singled out um in a bad way where it was like all they cater to is the married families the you know like the married couples and the ones with families um, especially because uh, i was a single dad you know what right. i mean um right. i was like man like they would always look at me as like a second class citizen like <laughs> all right yeah you you belong in the fathers in the men's group but almost like at a lower tier or something like that because you're not married so you don't really you haven't really experienced life yet because you're not married and i'm like wait a minute wait a minute yeah yeah and i, I um i think know, yeah. That's a unique thing to that situation. Um, right. I have a friend that was a, a single mom in the church, and she said, "There's just stuff that isn't isn't considered because the assumption is is if you're in the church with a child, you're married." Yes. So if mm. there's a woman's Bible study and there's no child care provided, what are you supposed to do in that situation? Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I that again is an example I think where the church can do better at just just get into that situation resolving the issue before the conflict arises yeah. for sure for sure I, and, and it's a challenge too with like single parents <clears throat> you know because uh, even our bible studies are set up every other because somebody got to watch the kids while right you know what i mean but what right. about the singles you know and that's something to think about i always right? encourage if there's single parents out there i tell them all the time me and tiff will keep kids like we keep kids in our house like yeah. we have like <laughs> 10 nephews and nieces and they live across the street from us so we don't have a problem with kids at our house <laughs> so if you're watching right now you go to christ alone and you're a single parent don't worry we got you yeah, um good. I've, had, I've had some good experiences too <clears throat> yeah. so i think there's some experiences where it's like i had to be patient with you know how i'm engaged but there's some experiences that have been helpful too and I think sometimes um, feel f married couples feel free to bring um, single people into your life, even when it's family life sometimes. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So my my um, my co-pastor, Eric, um, when he would have me over for, with his family for dinner sometimes, I'm, I'm then also sitting in on family devotions with young kids. Hmm. And I'm seeing something of like what it means to be a family man. And, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah and so i would i yeah. would also i just see a, a big thing i see a lot of value in um single people being willing to latch on to someone older than you yeah and build relationship and ask questions and yeah 
No, that's yeah. good. Excellent. So, yeah. Brittany answered my question earlier. Um, do you think the church has done a good job with the re- with the singles? And she says no. To answer your question, the church doesn't know what to do with singles other than assume they are available for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes Yo, that is the truth while my time may be managed differently it doesn't mean i'm sitting around doing nothing waiting to serve others rather i'm actively attempting <laughs> I'm, ra- <laughs> I'm actively attempting to fill my free time in service to god and others amen and you know uh man Brittany was one of the ones that i thought about for this episode but i could be wrong i'm waiting for her to answer um Oh, she's, I thought she had a kid this whole time. She's a negative. I am the church nanny and always have kids with me, but ain't none of them mine. Right. So <laughs> I thought she did because I always see pictures with her and kids or whatever. I thought I did. So I was I was actually saving her because we have episodes coming up where we're going to deal with the mother's episode. We're going to deal with the father's episode. And nice. in those episodes, I want to have at least one single parent, um, a single baby dad, a single baby mom. And so I was thinking of Brittany. Sorry if you look at that the wrong way. As I, I thought you were a single baby mom. Um, but either way, we have future episodes, like a part two to this episode on the singles. And Brittany, we got to have you on for that. Brittany is like one of our top supporters. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah look, we will be back to that comment section. I'm going to put the question in the comment section one more time for you guys that are watching. Do you think the church has done a good job lately with handling singles in the church? Let's get to some more of this content. All right. Um, Earlier, I mentioned that the Bible calls it the gift of singleness. And then there's some that may call it the curse of singleness. (laughs) Do you guys ever feel like that? I've I've experienced um, some. And this is... You know when he's flipping through the pages, I know, he's about to I say know. something. No, no, no. I'm being, <laughs> he um, opened the book. I'm flipping, he like, the about book. to pass the offering oh, right now. Like, nah, man. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being slow to speak with people that are well-meaning right. and trying to help me, but sometimes mm. I feel a certain pressure. Mm. Um, Talk to him. So I would, I would say speak that... Speak the truth. Yeah, but I'm going I'm to do it wisely. <laughs> I would say that it can be um, a frustration... And, and partly so for someone uh, in leadership, it can be a frustration when singleness is spoken of primarily in terms of a liability, mm. primarily in terms right. of um, you don't you don't have these sets of experiences, which is real. And you won't fully relate to some people's experience, which is real at a level. Mm. But the Bible doesn't talk about it primarily as a liability. Mm. It, it also talks about the blessings of the ways it frees you to serve the Lord, the ways it can free right. you to serve right. others. Um, so bringing some balance to that, and I would even say, um, you know, a married uh, pastor or someone married in leadership is going to relate more towards uh, family life situations. Yeah, a lot of the church, a lot of the body of Christ is single, and a single person Facts. in leadership is going to relate to you know single people in the church, and some of them single longer than they had intended to be. Hmm. So. Probably all of them. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would definitely say that. How about you, Bryce? Um, yeah, I I don't like being single. Um, I definitely go through. I would say it's a roller coaster. There are times and periods where I'm like, this. I, I don't. I wouldn't choose this, but it's okay. Like, all right, like this is going all right. And then there are other times where it's like, I want no part of this. And uh, this is not good and I don't like it. Um, I think to your, almost to your point talking about gift, I, I, I think well-meaning Christians will try to encourage you in your singleness by using that verse a lot. Mm. And it, when you are struggling with contentment, um, kind of being told that what you're struggling with is, is a gift isn't really helpful um and i i I think that they're different again i i think a lot of my struggles with it is just how this conversation is happening how these verses are being used um and also just understanding of what the gift is what that means i i I personally feel like the gift of singing this if you're single that you have the gift Mm -hmm. and if you get married okay well then you have the gift of marriage like it's um it's 
it's something that I think can be taken out of context as well as just kind of thrown at you if right. you have any issues with being single leave the gift of singleness like okay but I still in this just the same way you know in, in marriage you have struggles it's a it's a blessing it's a gift but it doesn't mean that it's gonna be easy right you know for sure, for sure. so we got about 20 people watching right now I um, want to encourage you guys to like comment and share the video we want to get this video out this message out to as many people as we can and we appreciate your support um, going forward with that, um, it's funny that you mentioned emotional roller coaster because that was one of the topics that we were going to talk about today. So let's dive into that a little bit. What did you mean by, and maybe you can talk on that too, like, would you guys say that being single um, in the church, as you know, as a Christian, obviously, um, it can have like that roller coaster uh, effect with your emotions and everything like that? It can be an up and down. Um, and I think everybody's experience is going to be different. Um, yeah, the up and downs look different. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is different. And, and sometimes you're you're thinking about what's the difference between a healthy desire for marriage that's not fulfilled yes. yet versus discontentment or coveting. Right. And yeah. and our hearts are kind of messy, so it's or not always clear. Envy. <laughs> even envy sometimes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and also physical desires and self-control <coughs> being a challenge um it's huge right. mm -hmm. so i think there's there's multiple good motivations and desires for marriage and but a lot of things that are good that are not god sometimes get put in the wrong place yes um and we when we when we seek our fulfillment that the thing that i have to have the thing that i can't do without the mm -hmm. thing that would wreck me if God called me to not have, mm -hmm. that's revealing, that's exposing me. Um, okay. That's exposing, you know, where my heart is. Can So, like, for me, one of the, one of the wrestlings for me is, so I have a desire to be married. Um, I have a desire to be surrendered that if God would reveal he wants me to serve him single for his purposes, that I would be submitted. And that has been one of the emotionally more difficult <laughs> things just to come to a place of surrender yeah what would you say to someone who or or to someone that can't see that how do you, how would you help someone that can't see how they're handling their singleness or their the desire to be married the wrong way like how would you expose because sometimes you know you i've tried to walk with people and pastor people and try to show right. them look I understand your desire. I think you're desiring a good thing, but the way you're handling the desire, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're looking yeah. in the wrong places or you're settling for someone who's possibly right. not even a Christian, you know? How do you show someone that their standards are low uh, or they're giving into not, maybe not mm -hmm. temptation, but like it, it's almost like a setup to yep. a temptation. Let me know? answer the first part and then remind <laughs> me of the other parts. <laughs> so I think of, um, <clears throat> We have been given what we need in Christ, um, not Christ plus. Jesus said, the one who comes to me will never hunger. The one who believes in me will never thirst. Right. And he said the one who comes to me, not the one who comes to me and right. this. And so I think that that's an area that can be a heart check for me. And I've, I've preached that. Right. Um, I think of Colossians 2 it says in 2, 9 and following, in Christ, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled in him or i think the nas says you've been made complete in him right, right. and so i think that at, at the first at the like the vertical layer the heart layer of do i do i practically value christ in a way that i i understand i'm complete right. and that doesn't mean that i'm not going to be lonely i've been lonely yeah um or or wrestling with temptation um so then what were the second and third parts of the <laughs> question? So like, I think sometimes like, and you can help with this too, Bryce, like yeah. that, um, the stand, the standards be, be, are low. They're, they, they, they might not be giving into temptation, but you can tell that they're settling for less or for a questionable right. relationship. You know what I'm saying? How do you get them? You know, cause some people get defensive right. depending on their maturity level, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, how do you engage with someone who you see possibly lowering that standard? You know? Um, I 
love this story of Leah in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, For those who who maybe aren't familiar with it, um, Jacob um, in the story in Genesis runs away from home. He's not a good guy. Uh, but God has, has mercy on him and, and makes him promises. Um, and he comes and finds shelter and community and, and meets this girl named Rachel who he wants to marry and is told that he can marry her. And it, um, Rachel actually has this older sister named Leah who the Bible says she had something, something was off about her eyes. It's not clear, but what's clear is that she was not beautiful. Mm. And... Uh, Rachel and Leah, their father actually switched Leah uh, instead of Rachel. So Jacob ends up marrying Leah and, and he doesn't realize it till it's too late. <laughs> and he ends up having to, he, he marries both of them in the end. The reason I bring this up though is I think, I'm, I'm going to speak from a female perspective. We want so badly to be beautiful. We want someone to love us, to be um <coughs> to want to rescue us, to want to take care of us, to want to protect us. Just as a girl, that's just, that's your desire. You want someone to love you. Mm. Um, you want you want to be seen as beautiful. And this story of this this woman who, she lives her whole life with this, her, her sister who's beautiful. She marries a man who doesn't love her. <laughs> and then the wife she's competing with is her own sister that she's been competing with her whole life. And, and the Bible says that, that God saw Leah. And she goes through this process of, she also lived in a culture where you as a woman having sons, that was your purpose. And your job as a woman was to be married and have have children. When she starts having children, she gives them names that are like, well, maybe now my husband will love me. Mm. And she it's not until she gets to her fourth son, the name's him Judah, then she she kind of realizes I'm I'm gonna praise God. And it's crazy, I think, even in the names, you know, you can, I don't want to mislead anyone, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you can almost see this, this thought process this woman is having as she's struggling with her place and her culture, her identity and her culture. Um, and the reason it's encouraging to me is Leah had all those things that her culture told her she needed. Mm. You know what I mean? Like she yeah. had a husband. Mm-hmm. She had three sons like that that's she's doing pretty well it that didn't that didn't satisfy her her whole right you know you feel me like it wasn't until she realized god saw her that she she was almost released from that Mm. um i think what i struggle with in that is knowing okay i gotta get to that place but knowledge of where you need to get to (laughs) doesn't mean that you get there Right. right. So I think that's one of the things that's so important in being in a church, hearing, teaching, understanding. The Bible gives us so many promises about Jesus um, and, and, and how he fulfills us. But knowing that he can fulfill you is is, is not always an easy step mm. from knowing that to, to experiencing that. That's good. And what I like about both of your answers is that it's, it's dealing with the issue of contentment in Christ. And, I, and, and it's because a lot of times, you know, um, ministers make the mistake of trying to deal with the problem in a therapeutic sense, like in a worldly sense, let me say, you know, um, and really try to get psychological and therapeutic to the point where God's not even pointed to that. This is a, a, a God issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, where's your contentment in Christ? Where's right. where's your devotion to the Lord? You know, right. where's prayer? Where's worship? You know, I recommend um, uh, reading Elizabeth Elliot. <laughs> um, yeah. She's someone who is a yeah. straight shooter on surrender to God mm-hmm. as you navigate these issues. That's good. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. yeah that's good. Uh, Lou says, I think the gift of singlehood in the church should be seen as the same purpose as other gifts it is for the building of the body so singleness is not just to serve me but to build and serve the local church that's good right amen um speaking on that one right there let's talk about it now um being that it is the gift of singleness and it should be for the benefit of others um how does that play into ministry responsibilities duties of a single person that is in the church um, would you feel that 
there are certain responsibilities that maybe um, are pushed off on singles that maybe you don't want to have or maybe they're neglected by the singles themselves like do you think that singles have done a good enough job in the church at really working out what their responsibilities and duties are to the body it's so in that question we've all had a different experience of the church so when we say has the church done a good job like, right so this is always church, like, yeah yeah um, your experience yeah, yeah. may and, and so, even i guess someone right. else's too but. i can give i can give some examples of um young men who have gone hard for god in singleness <laughs> and young men who are kind of like lagging Okay. And they're in their early 20s. Right, um, right. And so, like, I think um, one of the guys I live with, uh, Randy, is one of the most selfless servants of the Lord I know. Yeah, in, no doubt. In the, church, <laughs> in the church, in his own family, um, within the brothers he lives with, uh, in a, you know, outreach, a youth intervention center. Um, <clears throat> like, where there's a need, he's, like, wired to serve. And, like, so I think he's... He's stewarding what he has for God and will be rewarded for that. Right. Um, I also can think of sometimes young men like might be college in college and it takes them like a year or two into college to like reach college maturity. It's just sometimes men seem to lag behind in, in maturity sometimes. Yeah. Um, taking taking responsibility for things that really matter, and so sometimes you you might end up with men that are in their early mid twenties that are maybe even single partly because of not being responsible or taking initiative. Yeah. So <laughs> what's going on? Sorry, I'm just <laughs> looking at you. Um, no, it's 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 true though. Like something the three of us talked about, like. That I want to use my words very carefully here because I don't want to tear down my brothers in Christ, but I've seen this in multiple churches over multiple settings. There can be an uh, what I'm specifically talking about in, in a group of singles, right? So I think what you're talking about is like more church wide, but yeah. but I think there have been times where there's been a need for a, for leadership, mm. and there there needs to be a single man who steps up and and. Right no one steps up right. and it's extremely frustrating as a single woman trying to honor the structure that God has put in place mm -hmm. but at this and and how he he desires his church to be um but when there aren't no young man is stepping up to take that place right. to to show leadership to show that I'm not they're very they're wonderful guys out there and i'm not trying to say that's every guy and every situation is different but that is a pattern i've seen and even when i texted my girlfriends about like hey I'm, I'm doing this like what that was consistently something that was brought up of frustration of feeling like young men young men not stepping into leadership roles that there's a desire and a wish that they that they would do yeah yeah and you know what this isn't even like I didn't even send you guys this topic right here, but there is something I want to like talk about real quick. <laughs> Cause I was sitting here thinking like, all right, man, I asked this question a lot because when I was a single Christian man, there was something that always bugged me. So sitting here kind of reminded me of something as we're talking about this. Um, do you guys feel like how to word this the right way? Cause I don't want to throw my single brothers and sisters out there um, <laughs> under the bus. Um, do you feel like, and let me ask it like this, this way it's a little bit more neutral. Do you feel like there is a surplus or a lack of like serious Christian singles out there? Like, do you feel like there's a lot of fish in the sea that are actually edible, if you get what I'm saying? I think that can depend. That can depend <laughs> bro, on your. Because they always. Bro. Well, well, well you know what sea. I mean is because they always say there's an, there's more fish in the no, sea, I correct? Know you, but you that just you, added an edible in there. Fish that you, fish that you like, wouldn't throw back. Because there's always yeah, there's <laughs> always yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah. Of Thank course, you. there's. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, because there's there's always fish in the sea, obviously. <laughs> but I mean, no, that I. I how many of them are desirable? 
<laughs> I think that depends on your situation. So like I was in a in a Christian college that so was like Bible college culture and it was it wasn't uncommon meeting single people that are serious about the Lord. Okay. And so that was that was different even just um in a single in a Christian college area, right? Yeah. Okay. And maybe I I didn't experience so, that. Yeah, so, so that, and or um and from church to church it might be different. Um sometimes I see I see some at the end of like th- those are the people that like you wonder why someone didn't marry them yet. Like they are walking with the, they, you know, yeah. they're very mature. And then there's people that are that you don't wonder that are about. dragging dragging their feet <laughs> in in stepping up in life maturity and in their walk with God. And then there's there's people in the middle. Um, for sure, for sure, yeah. It can. I think it can. If I go broader than just my churches, it it can be the case that. Um, I think like most of uh, evangelical church in America are women. It's like more, it's like more than 50%. It's a tilt. And sometimes it can seem like not enough men are stepping up. Um, I do think there's a difference when some, I guess just with, um, with men stepping, this is not just singles, but with men actually stepping up when, when a church is calling men up to that and disciple with that in mind and preach the word of God on those things over time, I've seen, men take initiative and responsibility and leadership so i think where that's happening then you can have more good fish or whatever yeah yeah (laughs) you guys are gonna run on that one for a while (laughs) i think it you know daggone well what i meant (laughs) i think it does just limit how you are going to i'm again i'm gonna be from a specifically female perspective when you are told the man you know you need to respect him you respect his leadership you're friends with a guy who you you maybe enjoy being friends with him but you don't respect his faith Mm. that's right there that's going to put a hard stop and that doesn't mean that you see him only in that moment forever Mm -hmm. because everyone's growing right right and and that's that's i wouldn't want to be judged in that moment forever but i'm just saying like I can enjoy being your friend. I can I can learn from you. We can like we can grow in friendship. But if I don't see you in your walk with God and and have respect for that, then that's just gonna put a hard stop to any. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? Again, I was not in the college setting. I was not around that right there. I was single Christian dad. That you know, obviously, I was in different environments. So. I guess my experience was a little bit different. But, so I, I could say I've had conversations with a friend, a brother who's single. Um, at times we wish people in our like immediate circle, there were more single women that were very sold out for the Lord rather yeah. than kind of playing the middle. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Cause I, I did kind of hit that area like that right there. And like, I noticed that girls in the Christian colleges, they did not want anything to do with somebody who had a kid already. They were like mm. looking for, <laughs> That guy that obviously hadn't had that experience in that area didn't have that baggage either, yeah. and was like, "I want, I want the you know, be married, us have kids together, and and deal with you know that that's I'm, it makes sense too though it would make sense. I'm gonna give a critique though to women on that because I feel like women we are it is so emphasized to us to keep your purity. Mm. save yourself for some one person they've got to be the leader they've got to do this i feel like i feel like there's a way then which girls in thinking they're doing it biblically have created a man that doesn't exist right. that they're waiting for i got a story about that um <laughs> and i i think it's more common than not and i i feel mm. like there there's a way in which girls need to be taught that like there's a difference between not having standards and having having unrealistic expectations you know what i mean like you can have biblically sound things that like you need you you should have respect for this person right but there also is needs to i think be understanding that that um i heard a christian mom say this once and she said she had a daughter and a son she went to a conference the church had for her daughter and she came back thinking my son wouldn't meet any of those standards there are no girls that are going to be able to marry my son she's like my son's a good kid 
But if that's what our daughters are being taught that like they need to look for, mm. like that's that's impossible. I, I heard someone um I'm a paraphrase but I don't remember exactly. Say like uh if you're looking for someone who's like John Piper well, John Piper at 25 wasn't John Piper at 65. <laughs> right, there was right, growth. Right. <laughs> and so yeah. I, I would encourage people look for the pattern. Is the pattern mm. of the person's heart sold mm. out for God? Are, right. they, are they growing? Are they willing to make themselves accountable? Do they own things? Um, yeah. You know, are, is where they're at now different from where they're at a year ago? Yeah. And um, if, someone, if someone has has a humble heart towards God and fears God and there's things that aren't all right yet, that's a different situation than if someone is just um, 50-50 on stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I won't share the story in detail, but there were, uh, we were, I was pastoring a group of young adults in the season of me and Lynette's life and the girls just had these high standards. And I said, you're gonna be single for the rest of your life. <laughs> There's a lot Give of Give me a break. You know, and, and I, it, we went away uh, Friday and Saturday. <laughs> we went away and uh, to a beach to marry a couple, actually. And I sat down with them and I broke it down to them. Like, you're going to be single for the rest of your life because your standards are unrealistic. You're looking for this. You know, you, you're looking for the incarnate Christ again. Yes. You know, like he, he, he already came. Like, and, and way too many guys are looking for the Proverbs 31. Yo. And it's like, yo, you do understand she it's was married, that, right? Proverbs 31 it, woman was right. married. It, like, it's not going to happen. She might not have been that, that way when right. she was single. <clears throat> it's not going to happen. And, and my thing to them was look for the things that are 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 necessary, the, the, the things that are um, supposed to be there. You know what I mean? Like uh, a genuineness towards Christ, a genuineness towards God's people, to his word, devoted to Christ. Um, and that might come with some, you know, some uh, rough edges. Uh, and, you know, so that could happen. And I've seen it happen. And actually, there's a couple now married after having that speech and and, and they they're working it out. You know, they're. They love the Lord. They have two beautiful children. And, and, you know, the marriage is exemplifying Christ in the church, man. It's not perfect. None mm. of us are. Uh, they had their issues and, and things like that. But, man, it's God glorifying. Um, and it's working out. Um, Amen. So, but, yeah, I think we're at 57 minutes now. I want to push another topic <laughs> real quick. Because <laughs> right. I'm, I'm thinking about the audio here, and I feel like it's not complete yet. So, all one right. more topic, all right? All right. Um, Let's talk about the sexualized culture that we live in um, and, and what I would call the holy hookup. Um, we deal with that in church a lot um, as a married person. And even thinking back to my single days, I always remember that right there where everybody's like, yo, them and, them and her, <laughs> right. they would look cute and they would look good. And wait, why are you still single? And <clears throat> like, I think it's time for you to go do this. And it's like, all right. I get that there's a lot of people that are single that want relationships, but do you feel sometimes like rushed into it? Because we did talk about that earlier, but can you say that? Would you say that, like, that you would feel rushed at times? Sometimes. So that's not off limits. Mm. Like some people met someone. It was great that they ended up with because mm -hmm. older Christians said, hey, what do you think about? <laughs> right. Um, right. So I would say <clears throat> do it wisely. Do it with some restraint. Um, know your tendency. Are you a perennial matchmaker? <laughs> Maybe you ease up a little bit. Um, but me and Lynette are so guilty. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. I love you guys. Uh, and and sometimes that's couples have ended up married. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, I think I think it's it's this is like an application of like wise Christian counsel. Where there's decisions where you can't tell people what they should do, but mm -hmm. you can give them principles to help them think through. And so there's some of the people that you have to challenge, like, are your standards unrealistic? Some right. of the people you have to challenge, like, why aren't you considering so-and-so? Are you, you know, how are you thinking about this? Right. right. Um, and then when it's, when it's overdone, it's frustrating um, for singles. Um, you kind of like expect where someone might go you know with with things um but 
I would so I would say people have have had ideas for me a lot. Mostly I don't mind it. Um but I would say handle it well. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. No. That's good. I totally agree, man. Um how about you, Bryce? Um Yeah, I I I, I would just basically agree. I think um I think also though the caveat to that is just you already have so much pressure from culture from your friends to be in a relationship i mean that's just the assumption we live it with as well as just pressures and desires of your own i mean one one of the things i think we haven't really super touched on but just the fact that like we're created as humans also with sexuality mm. and the church churches i've been part of the leadership i don't think have it's 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 kind of almost this encouragement to cut that part off of you and like that's for later Mm. um and it's almost like just hold your breath it's gonna be uncomfortable but just hold your breath for a little bit and then you'll get to breathe right um and i just think no god created us to live fully who we are but okay but what does that look like Mm. what does that how do i live that out but I think when you have all those pressures and then on t- you then you come in from the world and you come to church and somebody's like, I just don't know why you're why you're still single. <laughs> it's like, come on. Like, I, yeah, like I, yeah. I came. That's not why I'm here. Like, that's not encouraging to me. And I think so many people do it in a way that's not part of it. Honestly, I just think is a generational difference. People, people people who are older they tended to get married younger Mm -hmm. and and um just a lot of things have shifted in our culture and i think often it's it's just it it comes from a a desire they want to see you happy Mm -hmm. but um yeah i I don't think there's something necessarily wrong with trying to help people find that other person but i think having it done in love and with care and wisdom for that person and also not like you're trying to fix something about them right don't you know? treat us like we're less or broken because yeah. of singleness. Like the second class citizen thing I was or, saying earlier. Yeah. Like I, I definitely feel you on that. Yeah. yeah. Like I've yeah. heard so many people tell me you're su- you're such a great girl. I don't know why you're single. <laughs> like I don't know what to take from that. Like I try to take it as a compliment, but then at the same time it's like Thanks. and and Thanks. speak speak in a way that you value and you guide singles to value marriage, but in its place. Right. Um, so don't don't hold out marriage to single people as the essence of happiness because you also from that i see people getting married that should not be getting married Mm. they should not but they feel that i i think it's a combination again pressure from culture pressure from your own desires and longings and then well nobody's perfect we'll make it work I mean, that's not, I don't think, really the basis you want to go into with marriage. And again, like, we can talk about having standards too high, but then you can go the other way. Mm-hmm. That, that you know, um, it, it was your, again, was your motivation? Are you content in being single and this is a step you feel God's called you to? Or is this just something that I'm supposed to get married, this right. person's okay with it, we'll make it happen? Right. That's good. Right. So I do have a question for the audience before we conclude. Don't answer this yet, guys. That'll be the first question of the next part of the podcast. So um, my question is, can you remember any good or bad examples of single Christians in your life? So I'm going to put that in the comment section. The audience, those of you that are watching, go ahead and comment. Answer that question right there. Um, do you, can you remember any good or bad examples of single Christians in your life? Um, at this point, Let's conclude. Are there any concluding remarks, any thoughts that you guys want to end the podcast with, at least the audio part of this? I mean, so, um, I, I give advice. I give counsel to those who are single. Um, and I'm not going to start with your singleness. I'm going to start with seek first the kingdom of God. Mm. Um, the great commandment for single people is the great commandment for married people is the great commandment. Love the Lord your God with your heart, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. No. Um, grow in Christ. Um, if you desire to marry, walk wisely in that direction. Um, put yourself in situations where you're, you're in relationship and have friend, friendships um, mm. that you could end up with someone. Um, get around older Christians that can, that can weigh in and help you see things about yourself that you don't see or maybe see things about someone else that you don't see. 
Um, and a lot of like one of the most um, maybe confusing or painful ways that God sanctifies us can be in waiting. And it is a time to grow our faith. Um, and that can be in other areas than marriage. But um, uh, don't waste your singleness. <laughs> um, tr- trust God. <laughs> trust God in this. The book. So. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Part two. Is there anything, Bryce, that you want to maybe, uh, maybe a shout out to the single ladies? Yeah, all the single ladies. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I feel like, um, yeah, to, to Luke's point, don't don't waste your life, I would say. You know, I think... I see a lot of girls um, waiting, waiting because they don't want to. They don't want to make a decision that's going to impact a marriage they don't have with a husband that they don't have. Um, I had a friend who just bought a house, which is amazing. She's doing so well, and and I, there was almost pushback. Like, well, what about when you get married? What do you mean when the, she might not ever get married? Mm. And if she gets married, maybe that'll be a blessing to her husband that she has a house. Like, but. Absolutely. This, this idea that you have, it's almost like that God God yeah. has these waiting rooms for you. No, there's no waiting room. There's no, I mean, and I think mm. you look back, I'm the kind of person I learn from stories. So to me, the I love the Old Testament because it's full of stories. It's full of the stories of people and, and God and so many of those people God asked to wait. And sometimes... As, as single, I think the, the thing that we encourage that I would change is just, it's like, wait and be patient. God will provide. But the assumption is he's going to provide a husband or he's going to provide a spouse. I think the, the change is to me, wait and see God will provide because God provides. And it might not be the way you want it. And it might not yeah, be in the time you good. want it. And yeah. it might not be. And I think that's also important, too, because maybe you won't get married and have kids. You'll get married. You won't be able to have kids. Like this is not there's just there's no there's there's uh there's no guarantee in life god you know when jesus in the end of john he talks to peter and peter asks well jesus what about what about john and jesus like we're not talking about john right now we're talking about you um and i think trusting god that he's good that he loves us even when he does things that we maybe wouldn't do if we were god because he knows us and he loves us um I think also just being able to have community that you can be honest with because I think you do need to be able to say like this is hard I'm struggling like I know what I should say now but that's not what I'm feeling in my heart and having people who can lift you up through that that's good amen uh Lo- I'm sorry. I'm looking. I'm sorry. He's gone. Is it too late for me to throw another thing we're running late <laughs> we are running late <laughs> right, hold on fine. real quick that's fine um Lowe's, is there anything yes uh I was reading uh an article that uh, this pastor from Third Avenue Baptist Church wrote: Nine things to teach. <laughs> you guys are bugging. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Abner, Abner is bugging. Yeah, I know he's bugging. He's bugging. Um, but he he talked about nine things to teach and emphasize to discontented singles in your church. So I'm just going to read them. The nine points. Uh, one: Contentment is demanded of all Christians, not just single Christians. Two, contentment doesn't mean you can't desire or pursue marriage. That's important. Three, you are not a human in waiting. <laughs> Four, you can uniquely picture the gospel. Because we, we do emphasize Ephesians 5. Uh-huh. But there is a way that the single person can exemplify the gospel in their lives also. Five, your singleness is a gift and a calling. Six, it's likely you're strategically positioned for gospel good. And the scriptures talk about that. Paul talked about that. Seven, God is with you and for you now. You know, that's so important, man, when you're single. And and like you, you guys have already been talking about just how you've been looked at as a single. Like, no, God is with you and he's for you, Mm. presently speaking. Uh, Eight. You are a uh, you, you are part of the ultimate family already. Mm-hmm. You have a family already, family in Christ. And in number nine, Jesus is enough. And then he says, really, mm. you know, mm. and I, those things are important, man. Um, and I have to remember that because I joke a lot. You know, I be 
you know, me and Lynette, we joke uh, uh, with some singles about, you know, things here. Now, we, we mean it jokingly. We don't mean it, but it is something to think about and to be more careful about because, you know, some people do struggle with their singleness in different ways um, and they take it um, more deeply. Uh, it's a deeper issue sometimes than we think, you know, for some folks. Uh, and so we always got to point to Christ as, as enough. Amen. Um, I would conclude by saying that even though this was a viewer's choice episode, this was like voted in by the people that are watching. Like, why don't you guys do an episode for the singles? This also qualifies as a what is Jesus done episode. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Jesus right. was the greatest example of someone being blessed with the gift of singleness. Um, <laughs> he took his singlehood to the whole next level, though, and right. and glorified God with every single moment of being unmarried um so i would say definitely look to jesus as the greatest example of um of what it what it means to be content um and and for yeah. god to be enough right. um I, I just think I, I i just remember being single and looking to jesus in so many different ways like mm -hmm. how was he you know dealing with this and you know yeah. obviously there's a bunch of questions that a single person might have but i encourage you seek jesus yeah. um and I was a poor steward of my single life. Yeah. I, I didn't handle it well. That was the know? best moments of me being single. Yeah. Now the poorest moments. It, we can talk about that on another episode. Right. But yeah. <laughs> it wasn't until I actually, you know, hit rock bottom as a single that I got fed up with the mistakes. And so, yeah, you know, right. some of us who did it right, some of us who did it wrong, there's always hope in right. Christ. And you know what? I want to challenge the married folk as well. I want to challenge the married folk that are in the church. Stop treating singles as second class citizens. All right. They are not less than you because they're not married. Um, Amen. Let's be involved with one another in the church. Let's like we were saying earlier, let's let's find a way to make that dynamic work with the singles and the married folk in the church. Yeah. Um, let's let's be one in Christ. Let's so. do better. Yeah, let's do better. Yeah, let's do better let's be the that. best we can, we, we can be. Let's be the best version of us. Let's speak our truth. No, All right, y'all. We're out. Um, episode 24 right. of The Basement singled out. Guys, make sure you tune in next week, next Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time right here in The Basement, where theology meets the thoughts of life. It's been another broadcast brought to you by Wrath and Grace. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, grace and peace uh, to the video or, or to the audio, actually. We're going to close. Uh, Those you, yeah. But for the video, we're going to continue on and interact more with the comment section. All right. All right. Says. All right. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll go back later and then I'll cut the audio at that part. Can you explain a little bit what we're doing now? Just so that. They know. So, yeah, at this point, um, we are going to get to the comment section. We're going to like all like quadruple team it and yeah. we're gonna get to the comments anything y'all see that you want to bring up or whatever it's, it's um open now. was there something you were gonna say before we get into these comments sorry i, I didn't mean to cut you off but I, yeah um yeah a few things one is i have encouraged men who desire to marry mm -hmm. and talk about what they look for as a godly woman and a, a wife the kind of wife they would look for um until then you should be becoming the kind of man that that kind of woman would look for. Mm. Um, so you can you can be becoming yeah. someone who is um, desirable for those qualities. That's good. Um, and thinking too about, um, so I said marriage is not the destination. Um, in the resurrection, they won't marry or be given in marriage. I would also say that marriage is the destination because eventually the bride <laughs> of the lamb will be right. presented to Christ without spot or wrinkle in an everlasting union of love and so that helps you kind of there is a marriage that that lasts forever and yeah. that's that's the one we put our our ultimate hope in and look for ultimate satisfaction in i think i said something to the effect of i can't remember it verbatim but for those of us who are married we're not going to be married and then for those of y'all who are single you're going to be married but ultimately we're all going to be married to christ you know what i mean so this marriage here is temporal but there is that eternal marriage, you know, that we all have to look forward to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Can I ask you guys a couple more questions before we get into that? This is the speed round questions. This is where I ask you guys a question and you guys answer it as quickly and precisely as you can. Speed dating. Speed dating questions. Yeah. Why did I not think yeah. of that? We could have made this into a game. You, you know you what? You can't give ideas to this guy. The this next, I told you there's a part two to this one. And you just gave me a whole <laughs> game idea. Why Thanks, did I not Bryce. think about Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, man. I'm tripping. Damage control. See, this is... This is it. The singles, job, the singles benefiting the problems. church. Look at this. Um, <laughs> You're welcome, Lewis. That's why don't you. you guys answer that question uh, I had earlier? Um, have you seen any good or bad examples of singles in the church? This is free for all. Everybody just jump in at this. Quick and precise. I think I already gave my examples. All right, 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 right. I've only seen a couple. Yeah. Um, I. <laughs> I almost feel like among the younger people, it's like, oh, don't want to be like so and so <laughs> single. <laughs> um, but I, I also think, uh, again, it's it's just a measure of the demographics. I, I don't think there is many singles, especially here in Lancaster. I think if I was living in New York City, a place that's more, um, it's less family oriented, uh, there would be there would be other examples of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think the world's view on being single has impacted the church's thoughts on it? Yes. <laughs> How? I haven't thought. But <laughs> I believe that I think you even see that in what Paul wrote, right? Because he had to encourage the church like, no, if, if, if they're unmarried, that's OK. That's yeah. OK that they're not. Um, and we don't have the emphasis that it used to be on women bearing children and, and the, obviously the American culture is different, but, um, I still think there's this idea that you have some type of life partner. Mm. It might, you might, culture might not call it a spouse, right. but it's that person that you're going through life with, um, as a proof almost of your worth as right. a person. Right. Um, and I do think that has come a bit into the church as to, again, put to the question, I don't understand why you're still single, mm. meaning there's nothing wrong with you. Right. Right? right. So if there's nothing wrong with you, you should have somebody. Mm. That's good. I think the world's the world's view of um, singleness can impact the church in this way um, related to people getting married later than has often been in history. I think uh, the world can have an expectation of um you do you first and you chase your dreams first you establish yourself first and then you consider a relationship or marriage and i think that um anything like that if it's common it can become somewhat common in the church right so wasn't that a question that you asked earlier I, I think i saw that in the comment section was that no okay i'm tripping all right um do you think the level of accountability that the church holds single people to is enough is it too much is it not enough? In what way? In um, whose church? <laughs> yeah, and again, it's always relative to what church you're going you mean, to. I know you mean. Um, yeah. How about your church? Do I think single people are held accountable enough? Um, some are. Um, some there's been some effort, and maybe some could be a little more. But I think. Um, I guess there's because there's two layers of that. One is like, are you receptive when when people are wanting to hold you or accountable or disciple you? Um, so that, yeah. that, that that's kind of what I was alluding to. It was yeah. like one of those questions where yeah. it was like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Um, some some singles don't actually allow people to hold them accountable. That Luke's not saying that there isn't even more of an effort because of a lack of interest or yeah you know what when somebody's not showing that they you know if they're showing that they don't want accountability or whatever but they're coming to the church we continue to put effort mm -hmm. you know into pastoring them mm -hmm. helping them to um see christ uh it, but it's difficult you know it is hard to continue to pursue someone and say yo like i want to walk with you but they're showing you they don't want to be walked with. Yeah. You know, so it, it is difficult because um, even some of those folks will say, well, nobody cares for me. Nobody. It's like, yeah, I've been calling you. I've been, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, so that's difficult sometimes, you know, to deal with. But 
that I don't think Luke is saying that we need that in order to, uh, but it helps. For sure. <laughs> For sure. You know, it helps. I would also yeah. say that I don't I don't want to say it's easier, but I think there are ways in which you can hide sin as a single person that you can't as a married person because your spouse is going to call you out. Mm. Right? Um, that when you're single, you might not have anybody in your life close enough. And that might be because you don't let them. Mm. Um, you're not making an effort. It might just be you're busy. Like, there, there can be a lot of reasons. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be purposeful. But um, I think that there needs to be care and sp- and and just just a special community you would want that in the church anyway but like an example of this is sexuality <laughs> you don't need to be sleeping with someone to be struggling with sexuality right like you don't you you don't need anything to struggle with that and just because from the outside someone seems like they've got it all together again like i think as a single person that's just one example but i do think there are ways in which it is easier to hide your sin I would agree with that. Yeah. Last question. Um, How have your thoughts on being single evolved in your walk? Um, Like, obviously, when you first became a Christian, being single to the point where you're now, because you're a couple of years in, right? Um, As a Christian being single, how many years has that been for you? Um, He doesn't. I know this is like personal now. No, no. Like, how many years have been a Christian? Yeah, and obviously like, you you've never been married, right? No, but so um, the whole time you've been a Christian, you've been single. Yeah, okay. And but I I was I believe the Lord genuinely saved me before I was even old enough to think about these things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so right. um, how is my so I could think of maybe my perspective on singleness at like twenty one and thirty one. Um, Ten year gap. 10 year challenge so i would (laughs) have if if i like wrote out my will for my life i might have got married at like 23 24 and have like four kids and counting by now or something (laughs) like that and um so i think i think um god has has taught and retaught me surrender um and so that that's one of the ways that um i i relate to my singleness um and sometimes surrender through hurt is, you know, God um, it pulls some things out of your heart that, you know, weren't supposed to be there. All right. And and like we talked earlier, a lot of the things that you're learning now are going to play a big role in marriage. Mm-hmm. That surrender and breaking you down, that mm-hmm. it's going to play a big role in marriage. It's not yeah. just temporary. Like what you're learning right, right now is just for this season. Or even if it doesn't lead to marriage. Like, right, right, right. I'm already know, assuming like, that you will be married. Right. Look at me. Even if it doesn't lead to marriage, like mm-hmm. you are still it's worthwhile in that God has a plan and 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 he's molding you because maybe he's doing that through a spouse. Maybe he's doing that through experiences. Um but that he that that yeah, he's he's got a plan. Yeah. He's got a good plan for Have you. Have you seen seen like an evolution in your own thoughts on yeah. being Yeah, for sure. So I was I, I've been a Christian since I was four. Um, that's what I say. That's what I think. Um, anyway, I guess God knows. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was, I was blessed. I, I was raised in church, um, but I was always that kid that I wanted to be mama. Mm-hmm. That was. I know some. Not all girls are like that. I have friends who wanted to grow up and be a CEO. And I was like, that's cool. I don't want that. Um, come from a big family, and I loved it. And I that was, I was like, I'm going to go to high school, maybe college, get married, boom, done. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I got, you know, older I got to high school. Wasn't wasn't really meeting anybody. Um, had a serious relationship out of out of high school and, and really almost got married. Um, and kind of got to a point where I was like, this isn't right. I can't, this is, this just, this isn't right. Um, very painful experience to go through. And I think going through that though, my mindset started to change to when I get married to if I get married. Mm -hmm. And that was a very, very difficult switch for me because to surrendering, I had to let that go. Mm -hmm. And it had been an underlying assumption 
my whole life that it just was going to happen. Um, and I think again, that tension of marriage is good. is not, it's not a bad thing to want. It's when it becomes through marriage, you, you, your life will have meaning. Like that's a real thing. I can remember crying to my mom. What, what, if I, I don't have kid, what, what am I supposed to do here? That makes my life meaningful. I'm going to go to work nine to five and make money and then die. <laughs> like seriously, like yeah. what, if, apart from Christ in this life, why am I going through all this? Yeah. And I, I think God has used my singleness to definitely show me my idols, to show me the things that I've been using in place of him. Mm, yeah. um, I'm going to be honest. It's still hard for me. Um, my baby cousin got married this summer. And I was like, dang, like, my baby cousin, and she is married and this beautiful wedding and it's like you dream about your wedding since you're a little kid if you're a girl most girls and for me to have to kind of be like you know god i don't know if that's gonna happen for me mm. i don't know if i'm gonna be get to be that girl mm. and i'm gonna have this moment and to surrender that to god i think it doesn't it's not once and done and i think you also go through events and moments where that that gets pricked you know what I mean? So I Absolutely. think that's part of that roller coaster of you can be doing okay for a while, but then something happens um, that you almost get. Yeah, it's just the it gets ripped you open again. Constantly. You got to refocus. But I think that was a big leap for me to go from. And then also being able to talk to people about it when they were making, talking to me in that assu- assuming way to be able to say, listen, I appreciate what you're saying and your sentiment behind it. But like, I don't know if that's going to happen for me. Yeah. You know, um, I've even had Christians told, tell me, well, God gives you the desires of your heart. So if you want to get married, that means you'll get married. Why would you say that? <laughs> that's not that's not helpful and it's not true. Right. Why so would if you, you never say get married, then that means you never really yeah, want to get married. Like what? <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, that's not cool. So, yeah. Well, that's great. That's uh, the content today, man. It has been yeah more than yeah. great yeah. i i'm 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 appreciative really of it and i can't wait to start chopping some of these clips up and posting them on the basement so let's look, get let's get to the comment section and then we'll kind of conclude from there all right it's a lot of comments <laughs> a lot you guys and, and that goes to show you guys must have been saying things that get these people talking yeah when people are in the comment section going off <laughs> that means that there's some good things being talked about Uh, Brittany Lank, right? Is yeah. that her last name? Lampkey. Lamp. Lampkey. Lamp. Um, um, forgive me. Yeah, we. Yeah. A quick shout out to her. She's our Patreon supporter, our only supporter right now. But she gave us a quick shout out on that. It's always about that one. <laughs> Let's single her out. All right. All right. So yeah, a lot of comments. Just um, question you know. from Evie. Tell us about. Really, Evie? <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all reading it? Yep. All right, you can you can I- answer it yes or no What's or or nothing, um, or like no comment. She said, "Tell us about your sexual desires. How you push <laughs> how you, how you push through your desires. Help others understand how God saw you through that tough season in your singleness." Can you not show that into a sentence? I think. I think. Or um, a you, sentence. Yeah, because I was like. I, th- I would relate this to other commands of God that are hard for our flesh to keep. Um, there are things that we want that God either says no to or he says not right now to. And so we just, it, it is surrender. It is um, trusting that the power of the spirit is stronger than the power of my flesh. It's looking to God for strength. And then it's being is being open with people and, and confessing with people and getting support from from those who are godly. Yeah, I think verbal confession to someone who cares that you, you're safe with is huge. Um, I do think there's a way in which sexual sin is different than other sin in terms of I think there's a shame that is attached to it and a guilt um, that's very powerful um, and can be very controlling. Mm. Uh, I also think, again, it's if your encouragement to young people is save yourself for marriage, <laughs> that's not helpful if you don't see marriage on the horizon. Um, right. Also just saying, well, 
you know, that, that then God hasn't asked you to use that part of you. Okay, well, that's still a part of me. I don't get to just turn it off, especially try to turn off your sexuality in the culture we live in. Like, good luck with that. Yeah, um, yeah it's over-sexualized, it's, man. Yeah, so... Everywhere I, we go. Yeah, exactly. And I think also there has almost been more of a attention, I think, put on young men than... I, I at least have felt this way. I know other girls is also something that came up that uh, it was talked about in terms of young men being careful with their sexuality. But if you were a girl who struggled with it, it hadn't been brought up. And so you felt like, am I supposed to be struggling with this? Mm. Like, it, am I the only one struggling with this? Like, mm. I don't, What is there something wrong with me? Is there, and like, again, talking about that shame, like that, that only pushes you down further and mm. controls you more. So... Again, I think being honest and I think also just having um, having people you can talk to about um, it's not as we, we we're broken here. We're sinners here. It's not going to be perfect. Um, it's not going to be perfect if you get married. It's just it's 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 just part of the life we live in and the and the now but not yet. Right. Brittany says, if we are even a little bit able, we need to be supporting the basement if we are tuning in every week, <laughs> it costs money to put out this content. You can become a patron here. And then she posts a link for those of you that are lining up to support the basement. <laughs> and says, thanks, Jay, for shouting me as one of their su top supporters. But that prompted me to visit their Patreon account at $15 a month. I am currently their only supporter. That is unacceptable. <laughs> hey, you know, yo, sis. Sis, speak your truth. <laughs> Chip in five, ten, twenty-five, fifty, a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> so into the ministry. You and do that too good. You know that, right? Yeah. You need to repent. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Listen, that's what I grew up on. I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm joking with you. Bro. I just got into reform theology. On myself. <laughs> Andrew Inman said, "Can a man ever feel completely free from the from that battle? Hmm. Probably not." And don't ever put your sword down in that battle. All right. And even even when you lose the battle at times, don't take that as, oh, I already blew it, so now I'm going to dive into yeah, more man. sin. Yeah. Um, go, you know, put yourself in the word of God. Put the word of God in you. Yeah. Um, mm, I think of Romans bars. I think of Romans 6 mm -hmm. through 8, um, just in, in how we relate to um, there is a freedom in Christ from the reign of sin. Yeah. Um, there is still the sinful flesh in us, but the Holy Spirit is given to us for our walk in new life. Yeah. And, and a Christian isn't going to get past temptation, but can genuinely live a life pleasing to God and the power of the Spirit. Right. And I think it's important. That's, that's an important thing that God just wants authentic, genuine repentance and brokenness when we sin, you know. I, you know, even married uh, 20 years and currently 44 years old, um, that it's a continual battle, man, mm -hmm. to, to guard your eyes and to guard your mind and your thoughts. Um, am I where I was 20 years ago? No, I've grown in holiness and purity by God's grace. You know, I, I thank God for that. But there were seasons in my youth, man, where I, I squandered my purity, you mm -hmm. know, as a Christian. Um, but God was always consistent and faithful, you know, and one of the struggles we, that, that I've had in, in dealing with my sexuality and even squandering it is how do I go to God in prayer now? How do I go to God in worship? How, how do I feel like, right. And, and the answer to that bro is, and to anyone who's struggling with that is that it's not about how you feel. It's about the truth of who God is, you know, that you can go to him as you are if you're broken about what you're going through he just desires that brokenness that it, it, it's a guarantee that he's close to you when you're broken when you're contrite in spirit you know and and psalm 51 is that famous psalm and we've read it so many times but there's so much truth in there that you know david experienced and he always had the savior to go to he knew it and he went to him constantly went to him and I, I would I would push someone to prayer and worship, which is the opposite of sometimes of how you feel after doing something you're not supposed to do. Go yeah. to God in prayer and brokenness and repentance, and He's always 
faithful and just to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness and sins. Um, so yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, another comment right here. Lou says, I think when we single see many engaging couples and marrying couples, let's celebrate them and remind ourselves to repent from the envy or upsetness mm -hmm. we might get as we see our peers around us drop from their singlehood. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, thanks, those of you that tuned in today. Yeah, this, this, this was, was a great, great. episode. Yeah. Thank you, Bryce and Luke. For yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah. Up. Yeah, it was Chris good. and Jet in the back. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little that. audience out here. You know what I'm nice. saying? Starting to starting to gain an audience in the yeah. basement. <laughs> you know, we might pass the mic around, and ask questions here. You never know. Right after we pass the plate around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, y'all. All right. Well, grace and peace. Make sure you support us. Uh, uh, we do have a group page, Facebook.com oh, yeah, slash yeah. groups. Hit the like button. Slash the basement. Hit the <laughs> Become like a button. follower. Yeah, whatever it that. is. And our Patreon is uh, patreon.com slash thebasement717. You can support us there. Thank you, Brittany, for your support and others that will support us. Thank you so much. And this is uh, facebook.com slash wrath and grace, our page uh, that we have here. And please support wrath and grace ministries. We have a lot of things we got going on. We write books. We do conferences. Uh, we have speakers. We have authors, pastors. Uh, like myself that are involved in this ministry um, and also pray for us we're currently uh, partnering with uh, Logos Bible Software and we're going to come out with the series uh, more on that later I don't, don't want to give out the details but we're going to be recording in November a video series and some audio for y'all uh, that will be included in the software so look forward to that Wrath and Grace Ministries is really a blessing and an encouragement we're trying to encourage the body of Christ uh, with good content yeah one so. more time hit the like button comment share this content that you guys like um share it with somebody it's it's, it's helpful yeah, um man. we've heard many good testimonies from it yeah but other than that this has been episode 24 of the basement singled out um we love bringing more and more content to you guys from the basement where theology meets the thoughts of life so make sure you tune in next wednesday right here on the wrath and grace page 9 p.m eastern time all right, grace and peace. All right.